Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is brought to you by Genesis House and the Friends in Recovery community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction and recovery. Join your hosts, the Podfather, Jersey Ed, Miss Meg, as they break the silence and speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Friends in Recovery Podcast. Uh, I am the podfather, Mike Miles. What's up, everybody? I'm Miss Meg. Miss Meg. <laughs> and Where's I'm Ed live from the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's have a little check in here. Are you all right? Are you yeah, okay? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> well, I really wish I was down there with you, up there with you guys, but yeah. I am, uh, I'm quarantined in my house. Um, good. And this is the best I can come up with. And uh, it's not as nice as a studio, but I'm staying safe. So, <laughs> Sweets, are you out there? Oh, I'm I'm here in the background. <laughs> yep. Sweets was just wearing a hazmat suit. Yeah. <laughs> hazmat suit. That's yeah. the new uh, for the next couple of weeks. Hazmat suit. I mean, what, wearing... I'm, what I'm wearing underneath the yeah, hazmat well, suit. I was going to say, you got that leg garter on yeah. outside. I think yeah, that should be right. inside. Right. But you're looking good today. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate Spiffy, that. Yeah, yeah, your hazmat suit goes good with the heels. I yes. Yep. You're looking very patent leather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, be classy. <laughs> Stay classy. <laughs> Where do you get those boots anyway? Jesus, they go all the way up to the knee. Custom you know, knee. these are usually for dancers. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was, um, I just found them in my closet. Those are awesome. Yeah. Well, you were on that Dancing with the Stars, weren't you? Yeah, it's from, from back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old style. Old still, style. Fit, still fit into them, though. <laughs> when two make check, check, check. Far clothes from you to get to get dressed once in a while? All the time. I'm actually missing a couple of shirts right now, yeah. and yeah. I've been like, wait, where are they? But I think Sweet has them, but I don't want to be rude and be like, dude, you need to wash those before you give them back to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I need them. <laughs> oh, my God. Real quick, guys, I want to just tell you about the guests we're having today. A very special near and dear to my heart. Um, and I'll tell you more about her once once she comes on. Samantha Barrios. Um, uh, I'll uh, just stay tuned, and you'll hear a little bit more about about that. She's from um, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. We'll get a little bit more into it when she gets here. So, nice. Anyway, back to you guys. Back to you guys in the studio. Yeah, now, sure. back to you guys in the studio. That sounds so <laughs> official. I feel like I should be on Channel Five somewhere. I don't know. And I should be like, hey, this is Ed Chanter reporting from uh, live from uh, <laughs> West County. In the, out in the field. We got you out in the field doing yes. research. Yes, yes. on site, yeah. on location. So how's everybody doing with this uh, coronavirus? This is uh, this has really been a tough uh, tough go. It has. It has. Yeah. It has. You well, know, for those of you that haven't been to prison, I'm sure this is extremely difficult. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I feel bad for you all. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> when people are like this is the craziest lockdown I've ever been in, I'm like, eh, uh, not really. <laughs> not ever. Yeah. This, this is good. This is as good as it gets if you're on a bracelet. Listen, I was in I was in <laughs> Middleton. I was in Middleton when they took out cigarettes. Oh, geez. All right. So tough. they had they had a three month lockdown, oh. right? Just so that they could weed out all the all the cigarettes left in the facility. Wow. Well, and then they came and shook our cells every week, and we got out every three days for a shower and a phone call and oh, a walk around the block. A lot of fist Every fights. three days? Every three days. 72 hours. That's the minimum. Minimum mandatory. You got to get every three days, you got to get a shower, and you got to get a phone call so you can reach out to your attorney if you need to. Right. Oh, my God. Were there a lot wow. of fist fights? <laughs> I mean, between cellmates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, kind of like husbands and wives right yes. now. Like, I'm sick of you. Bang. You know, yes. <laughs> I quit booze. I quit drugs. It was hard, but, you know, I got through it. When I quit cigarettes, I was a monster. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just a quick story. I'm out running. Believe it or not, I used to run. And I have the uh, the old Walkman on back in the oh, yeah. day. Dang. And I had a Billy Joel cassette in it. Nice. And uh, But it broke. So all I have is the radio. I'm up in Maine, and I'm trying to get a station. And I couldn't get the station. And I'd been off the butts about three days. So that Walkman, probably about 40, 50 feet into the woods. <laughs> I just threw it. I couldn't take it anymore. I'll tell you, that was the hottest thing I ever did, putting cigarettes. Wow. Why do you think that is? You think it was because it was the daily sort of not so serious habit where like the drugs and the alcohol was like, okay, this is bad. This I need to stop. This. Right. Right. Yeah. The cigarettes were comforting. Um, you know, the hand to mouth um, yeah. gestures and everything that was difficult. I bought some toothpicks. Someone told me to buy toothpicks and I did that for about two years. I'd eat. As soon as I had breakfast, I'd have a toothpick in my mouth all day. I'd have a toothpick. So that helped a lot, but the first three months was mm. a nightmare. <laughs> hey guys, I did, I, did I did I switch over to the smoking sensation channel? Yeah, this is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I guess this is friends and 
recovery. <laughs> hey, it, it doesn't say what what you're recovering from. Exactly. This is just friends That's in true. recovery. I'm, I'm I'm recovering from all kinds of things. Oh yeah, I we, actually we know that. I talked to someone yesterday that said their their gateway drug was tobacco. They literally yeah. said that. Absolutely, sure. sure. Listen, Meg, we go back to Michael Collins' show. Gateway drug is fucking sugar, man. Let's be serious. It's yeah. sugar right from the beginning. That's what that's what we get hooked to. You know, yeah, so true. Yeah, I, I, that was uh, a great. That was a great show. Yeah. That was, yeah. I look back on that episode. That was that was an excellent. I was thinking that might have been the first show you did with us, right, Miss Meg? Ah, uh, was it? No, it was right around no. the beginning, though. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it was right. She had been three or four shows more <laughs> yeah. prior to that. She was a so, professional. Where's our girl Samantha? Can you bring well, her on? Uh, yeah, we can bring Samantha on. Um, no? We were going to interview. Um, uh, Samantha Barrio, she's my daughter, and uh, she's um, she's in high school right now, and uh, she's going to uh, she's not going to graduate, unfortunately, the normal way. She will graduate. She's oh, that's graduate sad for sure. But um, I just want to introduce Samantha Barrios. She's from um, she's from uh, Langhorn, Pennsylvania. And she's my daughter, and I'm proud of it. One of my five kids that I have. Wow. Um, she is um, she's the Bucks County. Uh, Drug and Alcohol Commission Youth Advisor. She grew oh. up in a she grew up in a family that works with um, works and helps addicts get clean and stay off of drugs. Um, so she kind of grew up kind of listening to uh, us talking about drugs and alcohol from almost day one. And um, she also got accepted to Westchester University uh, in um, where is it? Where are they at? In uh, Westchester, in Westchester. Not New York. Westchester, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. So, nice. yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Hi, Samantha. How are you? Ian. So this is Samantha Barrios, guys. Now, my name is Chancho, but I'm a Jersey Ed. You guys know me as. But um, but Sam is my stepdaughter. I've been with her since she's been three years old. And uh, I just consider her my daughter at this point. So, And it's funny. Um, Mike knows her dad. Um, and when her, her dad and I are together, we're like, that's our daughter. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. God, Your weird. dad's a very really nice man. I met him, um, at, at a function and, uh, it was so, it was so nice to see him and your, your stepdad getting along so well. Ed, Ed, Ed and your dad get along so well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is. Nice. It is so. so this is Samantha guys. Hey Sam. Hey Sam. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Can you, can you, can you guys hear her? Okay. Yeah, Absolutely. we can hear her. Yeah. Good, good, good. I know. Um, so I just wanted to bring her on and talk to her about growing up in a family. You know, most most of us in this room, well, in that room and this room, um, grew up in a fucked up family um, on drugs and alcohol. And she lets me curse in front of her and she curses in front of me, too. So knock yourself out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love that. But she grew up in a family that was sober, which was different, like from day one, not from, you know, not from the, the hell and, and sure. the, the, probably uh, probably hence all her accomplishments. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so yeah. how is how is it being an 18 year old is it are you 18 samantha how is it to be an 18 year old girl who doesn't drink a drug and um must be difficult sometimes uh what sorry he was talking i'm sorry <laughs> but he never stops he never stops um <laughs> no i was it is is it difficult to be around all your peers and friends like at a party where they're all you know having a few beers or smoking weed uh and you don't partake, is it difficult? A little bit. Yeah. I'm more of like the mom figure. <laughs> that's so. a good that's a good thing to be. It definitely is. What is it like? Do 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 your friends ask you questions and like how open are you about your dad's history and sort of what your family has experienced? Um, no one really like they know, but no one really like talks about it. Like we don't really talk about it. We just go like we have fun. Not like a big thing in our life. So if one of your friends has a problem with uh, like alcohol or, or weed or drugs, do, do you, um, do they come to you and ask you for advice? Or? They probably would. They do know what my parents do and they know like what I do. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Great. Yeah, so did, she, good, good, Meg. I was going to say, how did you open up this conversation? Like, I'm just thinking because me, like my dad struggled with addiction, but I was a little kid when he was active. And then I do remember some times where I sort of saw some things that I think stuck with me when he was under the influence, when I got older enough to know what that looked like. And so I'm just curious for you having a dad that has this history, like how does that affect you at all? Um, 
it's more like a learning thing, but I never really witnessed or did anything like, so the only thing that I really witnessed was my stepsister when she was going through it. So then that's when like I started to know, know like how it is, but it's really it. All I really knew growing up was that they worked in the field. So we would be on, we would be at the dinner or at the dinner table or sitting around. How many bags of heroin you using? He OD'd when, and she'd be playing, and you know, she she thought nothing of it. It was just normal right. for her to to kind of, you know. And sweets, I think you 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 and 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 Pod brother, you guys grew up the same way too, right? Your kids. Yeah, mine did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just one, you know, one of my one of my children had some issues, and um, yeah, it, I didn't really know about it. Like I I found out. Well, put it this way, when I found out um, it was the beginning of the end, you know, so it was good. But yeah. I really, I didn't know, you know, I mean, he dr I drank beers and stuff, but it wasn't something that caused any problems. But, um, you know, the other stuff certainly did. Well, the one good thing about Sam is that when we, um, when she goes out with her friends, she tells us she's going to a party, there's going to be alcohol there, and she'll come back. And we were just discussing this before, um, before we went on, and uh, she'll tell us that, you know, people were smoking pot there or whatever. Um, she uh, also had a party here one time. She didn't have a party here, but she had like a friend party and the friend party turned into a drinking party for some people, right? Remember that? And we caught him, we caught him on camera, they were drunk and she told us about it. She didn't hide anything. Um, she didn't get punished. Um, you know, if, if we found out and she didn't tell us something about it um, and it wasn't her doing, uh, somebody snuck beer in. They all say that, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but <laughs> She yeah. did not know. She really didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, and they were sneaking. We have a refrigerator outside, and they were sneaking some beer from the refrigerator outside. And uh, you know, she's pretty open and honest with us, which is which is good for a, a you know a, a, an eighteen year old kid go, especially going into college. You know, yeah. absolutely. I think that's huge. And I'll say, like my first semester at college, and this is where I think sort of the open lines of communication with young kids is so important because um, so many kids got rushed to the emergency room that right. first week mm -hmm. because they just went like balls to the walls and they didn't have any experience of talking about this with people and realizing like what a limit even means and what could happen if you push it too far and that it's okay to stop when you're feeling like a certain level of intoxication. Right. And so I think in preparation for college, that's key. And I remember when I was young and I was out 18 with friends at parties and stuff, and I would get drunk and I would call my mom every single time because we had the relationship where I could be in a blackout, but I knew I needed to be safe and I needed someone to help me get home. And my mom would show up with her van and she would drive everybody home. So like, that was the way it went. And I think that that was so important to have, to have that open line of communication and be able to share that. Samantha, yeah. Samantha you're on a uh, committee. Um, your dad had mentioned it earlier. What's it called again? And what do you do? Bucks County Drug and Alcohol Commission. I'm okay. the youth advisor. Nice. And do, you, do you meet frequently or once a month? Uh, what do you guys do? Um, every other month, once a month. Like, right. And what do you discuss? They usually talk about like what's going on in the community and like in the county. Wow. And they like talk about everything going on. And if there's something like there was one issue with the vapes that like kids in school Big, were right. doing so that's like when I would talk but I usually just like over here listen I can talk like whenever I want or have like an input to put in right. but it's usually like I only put in an input if it's for the like teenagers or like right. youth because I represent them yeah vaping is becoming a really um uh, I think it's a a gateway to a lot of things but it's very you know to me I, I think it's very dangerous but it seems like the uh, people that produce these vapes and, and, and the um, all, all the uh, mechanisms that go with them are gearing it towards a young crowd. Yeah. yeah. You know, a younger crowd. Well, Sam, from, go get, get thank you. Well, I just wanted to ask from your perspective, I just, I look at sort of trends with young people and I look at what's cool and what's not and like how that influences what we encourage and how people gravitate towards certain groups. Is it cool to be smoking cigarettes right now as an 18 year old or is, like, <laughs> or is the cool thing vaping or is that not even like the cool thing right now? Um, the cool thing was vaping and it was just like the thing everyone did. So everyone felt like they needed to, which like, it was really gross in my point of view. Cause I see it as like smoking a cigarette. She hates this. Like I mm. hate all of that. <laughs> like, right. I don't like any of that. Good for you. Good for you. You're smart girl. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Friends in recovery podcast. 
Since 1992, Genesis House has been helping real people heal from addiction on their private recovery campus in beautiful Palm Beach County, Florida. Their family-owned program is accredited by the Joint Commission and offers detox and dual diagnosis treatment in a comfortable and confidential setting. At Genesis House, they focus on treating the underlying causes of addiction. Their comprehensive approach includes psychiatric care, individual and small group therapy, trauma healing techniques, and holistic care including yoga, massage, and animal-assisted therapy. After treatment, their clients enjoy the lifelong support of a nationwide network of Genesis House alumni. Call Genesis House today at 1-800-737-0933 to speak with someone who understands. Visit them on the web at www.genesishouse.net. It's time to start your journey to a long and successful recovery. Welcome back to the Friends in Recovery Addiction Recovery Podcast. We want to thank our sponsor, Genesis House, for supporting this show, along with individuals in recovery and the people that love them. Friends in Recovery Community of Support holds events across the country sponsored by Genesis House in Palm Springs, Florida, Marlton, New Jersey, Newtown, Connecticut, and Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. The Friends in Recovery Addiction Recovery Podcast is powered by your likes, follows, subscribes, and shares. And please be sure to do us a favor and leave us a five-star review. And now here are your Friends in Recovery. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Friends in Recovery. I am the Pod Father. And I am Miss Meg. And I'm Jersey Ed coming to you live from, not live, but from the garage. And who's sitting next to you, Jersey Ed? Who's that young uh, lady sitting next to you? Got Samantha Barrios, my daughter, stepdaughter. I call her my daughter, so she's my stepdaughter. She's our guest today. Um, I, uh, it's, it, well, it's, now it's time for the Jersey Ed podcast pick of the week. Um, and Sam, um, actually, um, I asked her what, what podcast she listens to. And she really said she doesn't listen to podcasts, but she, I was hoping Friends in Recovery, but, um, <laughs> 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 but, um, but she said she listens to you. She, she's, she watches YouTube a lot and, and YouTube is always on in, in her room or whatever. So she listens to a YouTuber called Marla Fay. So I thought she was going to tell me like some rap guy or that shit that you're into Meg and all that stuff, all that crazy <laughs> stuff. But when she told me who Marla Fay was, I was, I was, I was floored. I was very surprised that she watched. I shouldn't be surprised, but um, do you want to tell us who Marla Fay is and what she does? Yeah. So she's an influencer. She is just like, she makes YouTube videos about working out and travel videos and like stuff like she lost her boyfriend. So she talks about loss and going through grief. And How old is she? She's, I'm pretty sure my age. Oh, okay. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a lot like similar with her. A lot in common, yep. You have a lot in common with her, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I like her. I've been watching her recently. Super. We got to check that out, Ed. Yeah, so Jersey Ed Podcast Pick of the Week is Marla Faye, a YouTuber and an influencer. So check it out. Check it out. You can find it on YouTube. Check it out. Back to you guys in the studio. Whoa. (laughs) Thanks, Ed. I like that. (laughs) Sam, Sam, I'm wondering from your perspective as a young person and the drugs and the substances and the activities that young people get involved in. I mean, have you ever? <laughs> I'm choking on his cigar. <laughs> I'm gonna swallow my cigar. The, c- the cigar has a restraining order against me. Yeah, childless family <laughs> services are gonna be knocking on your door. You keep that up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, Samantha, we feel bad, but yeah. we know, oh, honey. Honey, we you. know. Believe me, we, we know. It. We got it. <laughs> I have sympathy pains from him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious to know from your perspective, have you tried substances? And if so, what's your reaction to them and how kids are talking about substances these days? I have a couple other questions too about particular drugs that are sort of in the forefront right now, but how does that work? Like what's the culture of young people when it comes to this? Um, It's mostly alcohol and pot. And then there's the ones that like want to get, like get away from everything. So they want to try stuff. So then they kind of like, tell you like oh you should try or we should try this but it's like it's in my friend group it's really just pot and drinking that's it. Mm-hmm. Right, right. do you find yeah, that people I, offer it a lot to you 
because I, and I work with young people and every time I, and you're shaking your head. So I'm, I already knew that you were probably going to say this, but I always hear people sort of my age and older say, oh, peer pressure, peer pressure. Is somebody offering it to you? And what are you going to say if someone offers it to you? And now the term is peer influence because it's like, no one really is saying like, here, try this. It's more like we're all doing it. And if you want to be a part of sort of what we have going on, then you'd partake or not. And so it leaves people in a different position. Yeah, that's definitely it. My friends, like the people that I hang out with, they don't like do anything. They don't push you. They do it when like they want to do it, but they don't do it a lot. They're not like that type of people. And I think just like growing up and now that we're seniors, I think we all matured. Mm. But like as a freshman, it was definitely kind of like influenced and very peer pressure. I have a quick question. Um, going forward, like I, I know it's hard to predict the future. You're 18, you're going to college. God bless uh, yeah, you're going to have a wonderful career. I can tell you're a very intelligent girl and you've got a great personality. But going forward, do you think that the opioid epidemic and the fentanyl epidemic that we've had the last several years, do you think that's going to change and stop and, and get better from your generation? I really don't know. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I don't know anyone that really does it except mm. for like older people. Good. But Good. a lot of people, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that question. What do you think, Miss Meg? I don't know. That's a good question because I was going to ask sort of what the temperature, I guess, is of um, opioids in the young people right now. It's it's really nice to hear you say that that's not something that you're particularly familiar with and everyone right. around you isn't just like talking about pills all the time. I mean, I've sort of heard horror stories from young people say that they go to parties and there's just bowls of whatever pills and people just sort of dump prescription bottles into a bowl or that at high school parties, people are around the kitchen table shooting up and that sort of thing. And um, I just, um, uh, sometimes you hear it and you're like, is that really true? And you get to ask people your age and ask and say, is that what you see at parties? Is that what's going on? And it sounds like maybe the pill situation or at least the opioids isn't running rampant through your friend group, which is like, un in that's incredible. I yeah, love, it's wonderful. I love to hear that. And I, and to your point, I think maybe we're turning a corner here if that's the mm -hmm. case. Well, I can tell you her friends, they, they're in and out. We're that house, especially in the summertime, because we have a pool. So her friends are in and out of here. And every one of her friends, I would trust with a key to our house, every single one of them. She has a pretty good group of friends, pretty big group of friends. And uh, I mean, there's a key, you know, the, 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 the key group of them. But, um, you know, and she'll tell us when, you know, when this one got drunk or when she, she drank, there's a time that you... You had, mom had to go pick you up from a party because you drank, right? And you had to leave your car there. My friend called her. Yeah. Smart yeah. move. Very smart move. Well, yeah. the old yeah. saying, birds of a feather, you know, and um, I can remember being 16 back in the 60s and uh, being at a party where a kid was shooting up. And um, wow. yeah, and, and it wasn't with a hypodermic needle. It was with an eyedropper and a needle and a, and a rubber band. And, Jesus. you know, I was just like, this kid came from a real prominent family. His dad was a lawyer and, you know, he just... Uh, it, that's when it, you know, I was introduced. I was 16 years old, mm -hmm. starting to see that. So it is good to hear that. You're a very intelligent girl. So what are you going to major in in college? Communications and media. Oh, nice. Nice, right? I right. love that. Yeah. You're going to run the podcast for us, Podfather. Won't yeah, we? absolutely. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love it. Yep. Meg, it's, it's Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, awesome. What do you want to do with the degree? Do you want to be like a broadcaster or something? I don't know. So I want to take like a bunch of classes and see what I really like. Mm -hmm. I know I went to go try out some classes one day and I really liked it. We did like um, a broadcasting one where you were on the screen and I did pretty good. I was very nervous though, but I feel like if I like that and I get used to it, I could probably end up doing that. I can see you doing that. You were on yeah, the radio I station like, too, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I like... Um, Philly. Oh, yeah, I was. On yeah, the she was on iHeartRadio in Philly. Oh, wow. Yeah. I learned how to do, like, the yeah. DJing stuff. Yeah. 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 Super. So, um, Samantha, do you mind talking about Westchester again? Yeah. So, I chose the college because that, like, when I walked onto the campus, it just felt like I belonged there. Nice. nice. And there's, like, all these different groups, and there's parties or sororities and there's like this little town you like walking distance 
So I really love the town and everything like about it. Sweet. Oh, wow. I have everything that I want, they offered me. And tell me why you like the college itself. Why, why did you like the college? What was versus like Penn State or something like that? Oh, it was very medium school. Like it was still big, but still small. Right. And they were very like everything I wanted, they had at this college. So I chose it there. Nice. Very intuitive. Very intuitive. You, you, you sound like you really have, your, as they say, your shit together. <laughs> how, how far is the college from home? And do you think you'll be going home, home at all? Uh, it's 45 minutes away. Oh, that's nice. nice. Yeah. So we usually go up there like a lot, maybe like once a month for dinner, shopping, especially during the holidays. So that'd be cool. And I feel like now, since I'm going there, I could come home, see my boyfriend, see my friends that are going to community college. Right. And like, I could still go. There's a train station that takes you to Temple. Really? Nice. Like, we could go to Penn State too. So it's cool. I get to still see my friends and everything. Anybody, like, anybody you know going to that school? Do, do you know anyone that's going to be going? Yes, actually my roommate was my best friend like since I was little. That's gonna be we wonderful. Like first grade together. And nice. then we're we're meeting two new girls and we're sharing a bathroom with them. So that's pretty cool. So like I know her, but then I also have people I don't know. Everybody, the bathroom was a big deal, okay? When we went to visit colleges. <laughs> It was a big deal, let me Absolutely. tell you. Absolutely. <laughs> for, girl, for girls, it always is a big deal, isn't it? I, I know. I mean, I know. Always. She could have got a full ride to Harvard, but if the bathroom <laughs> sucks, she would have stayed somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, she it out 100%. Yeah. Wait, Sam, you only have to share a bathroom with three other girls? Yeah. yeah. Wow, so you guys got it nice. And we had like 15 stalls and <laughs> it was not fun. And the, the bathroom is right in their quad too. They don't have to go down the hall to like the communal shower. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. so they gave that, they gave that like two options for two different dorms. And one was like more expensive and one wasn't. One was a traditional dorm, but that like bathroom, the door was open the whole time it doesn't really lock or close so i didn't really like that mm -hmm. i liked the dorms much better than the traditional because it was like all old and like they had bricks on the walls like wow that nice kind of very nice really cute i think nice ambiance. <laughs> so, so this is like all foreign to me because if if i was to go to college when i was 18 i would be looking for the liquor store who where the drug dealer was you know how far the bar was you know she's worried about bathrooms i can really give a crap about a bathroom as long as i be somewhere after i drank so much fucking booze after i used so much cocaine i you know <laughs> so oh, and the food's really good there too awesome That's anytime we would go and like go to a college they let us go to the cafeteria to try it out and this cafeteria was actually really good and I took class there, so I got, like, free meal and everything with everybody that I met. And they have, like, everything, and it wasn't, like, gross. Well, so, you really like, you really weighed your options. <laughs> I know. That's she clutch. Did. Yeah. She did, yes. yes. Well, my, do they still do, like, meal cards or whatever, and you can just go to the calf and, like, get however much crap you want? <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> yes. And then you also, since it's the Golden Rams, you get a Ram card that you can go into town like for Ram Bucks, which is like a credit card, basically. Right. But you get like points on it or something. And Temple and, Temple and Penn State are close by? Yeah. Penn State, That's awesome. a couple hours, so, but Temple's like 30 minutes. Nice. So I we're going to we'll go Meg. I was going to say, I think it's so freaking awesome that you're rooming with your best friend. Like, yeah. can I just tell you <laughs> how much everybody wants that when they go off to college you have no idea even the most like extroverted people that i know are petrified to go away to school and then have to room with people that they don't Total know strangers and, right yeah and it, i there are some nightmare situations including <laughs> one that i had so you are very lucky yeah that was my biggest fear i was i had two options my one friend was gonna go and we're very very similar and but she chose miami 
So mm-hmm. that was nice because I could go visit her too. Yeah. <laughs> but then my second option, I didn't know if she was going or not. And then we were talking about it. And we've been friends forever. We're in classes together, everything. She lives like across the street, like down there. And so she was just like, yeah, I want to go to Westchester. And I was like, oh my God, I got in. Did you? And she was like, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Good stuff. Real good stuff. Real quick before we go, um, I do want her to tell her about some of her and Meg, you guys were why why we were on a commercial break before you guys were talking about um some of the uh the interests to share about um traveling and doing some um some some volunteer work and stuff like that. Um we you guys want to talk about that, Sam. You, you want to tell you like the animals your and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So what? <laughs> That's her question. Come on. <laughs> well, we were talking. At, that crap. <laughs> well, we were talking at the break about maybe using your degree and your your training and communication and like maybe being on public platforms to speak on behalf of animal rights stuff. And we were talking about yeah. missionary trips and going off and right. helping and volunteering and when the oil peace spills. Corps. Yeah, Peace Corps. Yeah. Um, and, and cleaning the animals up after oil spills. Do you see that in the future for yourself? Oh yeah, for sure. That's like exactly what I want to do. That'd be like my dream job. That's awesome. You're a smart young lady. You've got a great personality. Um, you, you're going to be very successful. It's so nice talking to someone your age. You know, you forget. You know, I forget. Um, you know, there's this, there's so many this generation that's coming up. Your generation, Samantha. Um, I think you're going to be so successful. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Samantha Barrios. Thank you. Good job. She was <laughs> I know. Good awesome. Awesome. Look at this. That's right. Samantha, Samantha Barrios. We'll be checking in with you again, probably after your first or second semester. How's that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Samantha, right, let's super. let's team up and do like a uh, let's like go across the country and do something wild and go <laughs> save some animals. Save some whales. <laughs> save some tigers down in uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they might need our help. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, friends of recovery, everybody. Um it's really nice hearing from Samantha Barrios and Jersey Ed. That's right. That's right. Here in my garage, stuck in uh, in our pandemic up here and uh, right. How are, how are you guys doing? You guys doing okay down there? We're doing great. Yes, staying you guys are, safe. Staying yeah, safe. Staying safe. Yeah, you're, you're, she, she's going right now. All so. right. <laughs> Bye, Samantha. All right. Bye, nice Samantha. You. Hey, everybody, Friends in Recovery podcast. That concludes this episode of Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery podcast. Thanks to Genesis House for supporting those on the path to recovery and for keeping this valuable resource free for our Friends in Recovery community. Follow us on Facebook for past shows and updates. If you're interested in becoming a guest on the show, email us at help at friendsandrecoverypodcast.com. If you can't get enough of Mike the Podfather and Jersey Ed, you can catch them on Answering the Call, the First Responder Podcast, available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube.